Hello and welcome to this video. Today I'm going to give you a tour of my new Google Sheets brain dump and idea tracker. I initially created this spreadsheet for myself because I always have so many ideas floating around in my head at the same time and sometimes I don't make the best decisions when it comes to which idea to work on next. Sometimes I just choose the one that sounds more fun at the moment and not necessarily the one that's going to help me reach my long-term goals. So I really wanted to create a spreadsheet that would help me organize all my ideas and that would also help me decide which idea makes the most sense to work on next based on my long-term goals. So I'm going to give you a tour of the layout that I came up with and if you don't already have the template you can find the link to purchase it in the description but you can also just watch this video get inspired and create your own layouts. So let's get into it. So the goals tab is the first tab that you're going to work on. I know this is a brain dump an idea tracker but I also really wanted to add a section for goals just to help you keep your long-term vision in mind. So every Everything in here is optional. You're only going to fill in cells that have a white background. This is what it looks like empty and this is what it looks like with some information in it. And the first thing you're going to do is you're going to type in the name of your goal in this column. So make sure to keep that name short. I'm going to show you why in a moment. So I'm just going to do my new goal. And then over here, everything is optional. You can add a small description of how accomplishing this looks like. And then the reason why you want this, just to help you emotionally connect with that goal. And over here, if you want to set a deadline, all you have to do is double click on any of these date cells, pick a date. And once you do that, the number of days left will update automatically and it's going to keep on updating automatically every single day. I'm just going to type in some example text over here. And then once you accomplish your goal, you can also double click on these cells and select the date in which you accomplished it. And if you want goals that have already been accomplished to be scratched, all you have to do is check this box over here. And as you can see, your texts will be scratched. So as I mentioned, everything is optional, but I highly suggest that you do add at least your goals over here because once you're brain dumping your ideas, you're going to be able to connect each of your ideas to one of these goals. Drop downs are going to be created based on whatever information you add here. I'm going to show you how that looks like and you're going to be able to connect each of your ideas to one of your goals. So that's the main reason why this exists. And then all of this is just for your own reference if you want to fill it out. So so make sure to keep these texts short just so that your drop downs don't end up having too many words and then if you want to get more specific you can use these two columns over here or you can use the notes section over here. So once you're done with this tab, you can start brain dumping your ideas. And I added two different tabs for that. I added tab list layout one and then tab list layout two. So you can brain dump your ideas on any of these two tabs. The main difference between them is that the first one is divided into 10 sections and these sections are initially blank and they can become anything you like. All you have to do is type in the name at the top over here. And then every single new idea that you add will be assigned to that category. So it's sort of a way to keep your ideas always separated in different buckets that are related to the same thing. So as I mentioned, this tab has 10 sections. And then if you don't care about having sections, I also added a different layout that is just one big table in which you can brain dump your ideas and then you can manually assign a category to each one. So that's the main difference in this one. You get to assign manually a category for each idea and then in this one the category will be assigned automatically based on the section where you added that idea. So you can choose to work on whichever layout you prefer and since you can create multiple copies of each of these tabs you could create one tab for your business and you could choose to use this layout and then maybe you're working on some other project and you can create a new tab for that project and choose to use this layout. Totally up to you. You can create as many copies of these two tabs as you like and I'm gonna show you how you do that properly later in the video. So this is where you're gonna type in the name of your section, the name of your category and then down here you're gonna add all of the ideas that belong to that section and you can add more rows. I'm gonna show you how you do that later. So initially this is empty and then whatever you type in here becomes the category that each of these ideas will be assigned to and then everything else is optional but the more information that you add here the more information you'll have when it's time to decide which idea you're gonna work on next. So in this first section of 
over here, you can write a small text that reminds you why you thought this would be a good idea in the first place. And then the second section over here is there to help you connect each of your ideas to one of your goals. So as you may recall, these drop downs over here, they are created automatically using the elements that you add in the goals tab. So whatever you add in this column is going to show up on every single one of these drop downs and it will allow you to connect each of your ideas to one of your goals. And then you have these two other drop downs over here and the elements inside these drop downs are fully customizable and the place where you customize them is on the settings tab. So if you jump into that tab, you're going to find these two tables over here so you can add 15 elements for your status drop downs and you can add 15 elements for your priority drop downs and whatever elements you add in here will automatically show up on every single one of these drop downs and you don't have to assign a status and a priority to every single idea it's completely optional and just there if you need it and then if you scroll to the right you're going to find a column for difficulty and a column for impact this is the feature that i use the most so what you're going to find here is drop downs that have the numbers from 1 to 10 you can either pick a number from the drop down or you can directly type it in using your keyboard but the most important thing is that you only add numbers from 1 to 10 in these two columns so if something's really hard then that can be a difficulty of 10 and then if it's going to have a high impact on this goal that you connected this idea to then that could be number 10 and then maybe this has a very low impact so that could be number one so again these two are optional but i think they are going to be very useful when you are deciding what you're going to work on next and then over here you have room to assign a deadline to each of your ideas completely optional all you have to do is double click on one of these cells pick a date and you'll see that the number of days left is updated automatically if the date is in the past and you haven't checked this box then the date will be highlighted in red and you'll see a negative number of days left this should have been done 303 days ago if you check the box it will no longer be red and you will no longer see the number of days left so if you check every single one of these boxes this will disappear and then this final column over here is just plain text so you can type in the amount of time that executing this idea will take in whichever format you like it's just text so these are all the sections that i added by default and if you need more room for additional information you can use these four custom columns over here all you have to do is change these white cells at the top rename them so notes for example and as you can see the header for every single section is going to update automatically so if i type in link then that's going to change as well so using these columns is completely optional and then as i mentioned you have this layout that is divided into 10 sections or you have a second layout that is not divided into sections this one works pretty much the same way the only difference is there are no sections it's just one big table and instead of the categories being assigned automatically to each idea depending on the section where you added them in this tab you get to assign the categories manually using these drop downs over here and the place where you customize these elements is once again the settings tab so if you jump into the settings tab you're going to find this table over here so this is where you can make a list of all of your categories there is room for up to 50 categories and whatever elements you add here will show up in these drop downs over here so that's the only difference and other than that this tab works exactly the same way and then if you need to add more rows on any of these two layouts, what you're going to do is in this first layout, you're going to pick a section and you're going to add those rows somewhere in the middle of each section. So for example, if I select three rows, I'm going to be able to add another three rows. I'm only selecting rows that are in the middle of the table without touching this first row and this last row and without touching the header. So if I select three rows and I right click and select the option insert three rows below, I'm going to add an additional three rows below. If I select maybe five rows i'll get the option to add five rows below so you can do this as many times as you like just make sure that you are never touching the first row or the last row of each section and then it works the same way on this second layout you can add rows anywhere in the middle without touching this first row and without touching this last row so i can right click on this random row for example and then select the option insert one row below so each of these two layouts can hold a maximum of 500 ideas and then if you 
need more, you can always create a new copy from either of these two tabs and you can have as many copies of these tabs as you need within the same file. I will show you how to create those copies later in the video. And if you scroll all the way down, you're going to see how many ideas you have added into each of these tabs. The same goes for the second layout. If you scroll down, you're going to see how many ideas you have added. And then this layout, it's divided into 10 sections. So you can only have a maximum of 10 sections. And again, if you need more room, you can always create a new copy of this tab. So once you're done working on your goals tab and once you're done brain dumping your ideas into either one of these layouts or both of these layouts if you like, you're going to jump into the idea picker tab. And this is a tab that's going to help you decide what you're going to work on next. This is what it's going to look like at the beginning. It's going to be completely empty. And the first thing you have to do is you have to type in the name of the tab that you want to view in this table. So let's say I want to see all of the ideas that I added into the tab called list layout one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump into this yellow cell and I'm going to type in the name of this tab. So I'm going to type in list layout one. And as soon as I press enter, you're going to see that every single one of my ideas was pulled automatically into this table. So let's say that I just want to see all of the ideas that are related to marketing. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select the option marketing from this drop down and immediately the table is going to filter. So I only see ideas that are related to marketing. And then let's say I just want to work on things that are related to the goal that I named sell 1000 candles monthly. So I'm going to select that from this drop down and again my table is going to filter a bit more so I only see ideas that are related to this goal and that belong to this category and then maybe I only want to see ideas that have an impact of nine and a difficulty of seven so I only see ideas that match every single one of these filters and then to remove a filter all you have to do is select it and press delete on your keyboard and if I do that for every single filter once again I'm going to be seeing my entire table. If I just want to see tasks that are not done, what I'm going to do is select the option no from this done drop down. And then you're only going to see ideas that do not have their box checked in the original tab over here. So this section is meant for filters and then you can use this other section over here to sort your table. So let's say you want to sort it by deadline. All you have to do is select this option over here so you can sort in ascending or descending order. And then as an additional feature, let's say you're sorting by deadline. There are going to be rows in which you did not add a deadline. If you would like to hide those rows, what you can do is select this checkbox over here and immediately you're going to see that the rows that don't have a deadline will be hidden. So let's say you are sorting by status. You're going to see that there's these rows over here that do not have a status assigned. If I check this box, those rows are going to be hidden. And whenever this is happening, the title will be highlighted like this, just to remind you that some rows are being hidden. As soon as you uncheck this box, then it's no longer going to be highlighted. So I created this idea picker tab to help you narrow your focus when you're making decisions. So you have these tabs where you can brain dump everything, but once it's time to make a decision, let's say maybe right now your main priority is the goal that you have to sell a thousand candles monthly. So you can select that from this drop down and filter those ideas so that you are only seeing ideas that are related to that specific goal. And then everything else is still here, but out of the way for the moment. And then if you have an idea that you were not able to connect to one of your specific goals, then maybe that idea should not be a priority at the moment. So this single idea picker tab can help you filter and sort your ideas from either one of these layouts. All you have to do is type in the tab name here at the top. So if I delete this, it's going to turn yellow again. And if I add a new name, let's say now I want to view my list of ideas found on the tab called list layout 2. All I have to do is type in that name here at the top and I'm going to see those ideas appear automatically. And once again, you can use these options to filter and sort. So you're going to be able to view one tab at a time in this table and all you have to do is replace this name up here as often as you like. And super important, the idea picker tab will only show the columns that I added by default. If you add additional columns over here, those are not going to show up in the idea picker tab. They will just remain wherever you added them. So that's how everything is connected. You start by working on your goals tab and then you can brain dump your ideas in either one of these tabs 
or on both of them if you like and then you can use the idea picker tab to filter and sort a specific list of ideas and there's three additional tabs that we haven't used until now and these are going to be your blank originals so whenever you want to create a new copy of any of these three tabs you're going to use their corresponding blank original you know you're looking at a blank original because it's going to have a little lock in it and you're not supposed to change anything in there you're only supposed to use these tabs to create copies and the way you do that is you select one of those blank originals you right click on the tab name and you select the option duplicate so as soon as you do that a new copy is going to appear right next to that tab so you can double click in here and rename this tab to something different and then you can just move it around and place it wherever you like and then you can start working on your new tab and then you can do the same thing with the second layout. All you have to do is right click, select the option duplicate, and then double click here and rename it. And what's going to happen with the second layout is that every new copy that you create is going to show the same categories that you customized in the settings tab over here. And again, you can just move this around and every one of these three tabs works exactly the same way. You can also create multiple copies of the idea picker tab if you like or you can just use the same one to view every single one of your lists of ideas remember all you have to do is type in the tab name up here but i also added a blank original in case you want to create copies from it and super important the settings tab and the goals tab must be unique you should never try to create any copies from them because if you do they will not be connected to the rest of the features so these two must be unique and finally if you take a look at the idea picker tab you'll notice there's this column over here that's going to be initially empty that's an additional feature that i added it's not necessary to use and if you do decide to use it you're going to have to follow an additional setup step you'll get instructions inside the pdf that you receive with your purchase and what's going to happen is links are going to be created dynamically so you're going to be able to jump into the corresponding row in the original tab from the idea picker tab and those links are going to keep on working even if you filter the table so this is an additional feature because it will only work if you set it up using a browser it can be a computer browser or it can be the browser version of google sheets on an ipad for example but if you're using the app and you're not able to see the spreadsheet link over here at the top then you won't be able to set that up which is why i just added it as an additional optional feature because if you're just using your phone for example you're not going to be able to set it up from there but it's completely optional and the template works perfectly fine without that feature so that's it for this this video i hope you liked it i hope you found it useful if you have any questions please feel free to reach out and i will be happy to answer them thank you so much for watching